G'day and welcome back to our Ultimate Guide to Welding series. In this episode, we're delving into plasma cutting. What is plasma cutting? There are four states of matter, solid, liquid, gas and plasma. Plasma is formed when compressed air or compressed gases like nitrogen and argon make contact with the electrode which is inside the torch, and ionized to create plasma. Plasma cutting, or plasma arc cutting, therefore, is a melting process that uses plasma and an outside power source to create an electric arc between an electrode and the metal being cut to melt and ejected from the cut. Plasma can cut through anything electrically conductive, such as steel, stainless steel, and aluminium. In comparison, oxy cutting will only work on metals that contain iron, as it works through chemical reactions, such as oxidization. It's similar to how rust forms, only much faster. Plasma cutting runs at around 20,000 degrees Celsius and can shoot sparks up to 12 meters or 40 feet. Safety then is the first thing you need to think about before you even begin cutting. Make sure to clear any loose fire hazards around you before turning on the torch, as these sparks can start fires if they land on something flammable in your workspace. Wearing the correct clothing is also essential. Personal protective equipment will help keep any stray sparks from burning your skin and head. These clothes include a flame resistant long sleeve jacket, leather gloves, long pants, leather shoes or boots, safety glasses, a bandana or a hood and a welding helmet. Make sure that your welding helmet covers the shade range needed, as you don't want to stare directly into the light without a dark enough shade. For plasma cutting, shade 4 in grind mode is recommended. Unimig helmets are auto-darkening with a wide shade and range for every job. Also, you'll want to have some form of ventilation in your space you're working, as the fumes from the metal can be toxic. If there is no way to ventilate the area you're working in, then you can wear a respirator under the welding helmet instead. Unimig sells a full range of safety apparel and accessories for every type of project. To begin, we need to set up our machine correctly with a few simple steps. Unlike welding machines, every Australian made plasma cutter you can buy is made to work on compressed air only, including Unimig machines. The good news is that an air compressor attaches to the back of the plasma cutter in the same way a gas bottle connects to the back of a welder. The bad news is that Unimig doesn't supply air compressors, so you'll have to purchase one separately from your local hardware store. The need for an air compressor means they're not very portable because you need to be connected to the compressor at a power supply. When purchasing a compressor, Make sure to get one that can deliver 70 to 120 psi and has an airflow intake volume rating that is greater than your plasma cutter. You don't want to run out of air before you finish the cut. If you're looking for more portability, some machines come with built-in air compressors, like the Unimig RazorCut 40 Air Plasma Cutter, though these machines will still need a power supply. An air dryer or filter is essential for keeping contaminants like moisture and dust particles out of the machine's air lines. Moisture in the pipes will come out in your torch and cause your consumables to burn up faster, resulting in bad cuts, which is something you want to avoid. Depending on which model machine you have, your water trap can be found inside the machine or at the back of the machine. There are three types of filters to consider. Basic, roll and inline. Most plasma cutters will come with a basic air filter. These will work fine, especially if you're only doing small cuts on hobby projects, but additional high quality air filters is still recommended. If you choose to upgrade your air filter, the original basic filter with the water trap will remain attached to your machine, and the new filter is attached as an extra unit. Basic air filters are self-draining, with a small hose that sticks out the bottom to capture the moisture to drip out. Some Unimig machines have this basic air filter installed inside the machine, but these come with a drainage hole drilled in the bottom to work in the same way. Roll filters look similar to a toilet roll, which is where they get their nickname toilet roll filters and consist of a cylindrical cartridge. The roll works well, but it's not self-draining, which means that they need to be changed every so often, depending on the frequency of use. So what's the problem? Airflow is one of the most important things when running a successful plasma cut, and these filters block the moisture as well as the airflow when they close. Plasma cutting is done in DCEN, direct current electrode negative. Getting the polarity correct on your plasma cutter is a lot easier than any form of welding because the plasma torches have a different shape plug. 
There's no guesswork involved in this one, so you literally can't connect your earth clamp or torch into the wrong connector. Unimix ViperCut 30 Plasma Cutter, that's great for your home DIY projects, comes with a torch already connected, making this setup even easier. So just a quick tip, don't clamp your earth to the bit of metal that will be cut off, as you could become the path of least resistance, and that won't be fun. Make sure to attach your earth clamp to either a clean metal workbench or the part of the metal that will not fall off once it's cut away. Clean away any contaminants with a grinder or sanding disc if need be. Because plasma cutting machines come with a specific plug for the torch and only the positive polarity panel mount, you can't use them for anything else. Unlike welding machines, which are generally mix and match to a degree. The attachments on your torch will make a significant difference to the type of cutting you can do with your machine. For example, the Unimig SC30 Plasma Torch, which comes with the ViperCut 30, can do standoff and contact cutting. The only thing it can't do is gouging. In comparison, the SC80 Plasma Torch can do all three types. So it's important to understand the three differences with plasma cutting. Contact cutting is what it sounds like. You place the tip of your gun against the metal you want to cut and off you go. Unimig torches come with a shield cap to help protect the head and the consumables. Standoff cutting is similar to contact cutting, except you are forced to leave a space between a torch and the metal. There are ways to help you do this. You can utilize the standoff guide. This process gives your consumables extra life as they remain at a distance from the sparks. Gouging is used when you want to remove metal from a piece without actually cutting through it. It's generally used to remove defective welds so you can redo them. In general, regardless of the type of cutting you want to do and the shield you attach for it, there are several consumables inside the gun which remain the same, though they may look slightly different. These include electrode, swell ring or gas distributor, cutting tip, retaining cap, and a standoff guide. Putting the consumables together to get your torch up and running isn't too hard, and most machines will come with a guide either on the machine or in the manual. Unimig torches usually come already set up, but if you do need to swap parts or replace them, you'll need to take apart and reassemble the torch. First, place your swell ring or gas distributor on the torch head. Now, screw your electrode in. Place your cutting tip over the electrode. Screw your shield cap retaining cap in. This should go over other parts and hold everything in place inside the torch. Higher end torches will also need a cooling tube. The tube sits inside the torch head and the electrode is screwed on over it. If you haven't assembled the torch correctly, you'll know about it straight away, as it won't turn on. Most of these consumables will sit in place, so don't try and twist or force things, you'll just end up breaking parts. The most important thing about the consumables is that you have the right ones for the right type of cutting you want to do, and they'll withstand the amps you'll be using. These can all be changed and replaced as needed. The small opening of your cutting tip shouldn't touch the material you're cutting, unless the torch is designed for the tip to make contact. A damaged contact tip will lower the quality of your cut. The cutting tip should also be able to withstand the number of amps output by the machine, otherwise it will burn up. In both of these cases, you'll need to replace your cutting tip. You do need to replace the electrode in your gun once there is around a 1mm pit in the centre of the piece. It's recommended to swap out the electrode and your cutting tip at the same time. Unlike welding, the amps you set your machine to will not affect the cut all that much so long as you adjust your travel speed to compensate. You can set your machine to its max amps and cut every thickness of metal, but if your machine goes up to 80 amps and you're cutting 2mm steel, you're going to have to fly across the cut to avoid warping or completely melting the metal. You'll also need to make sure you've got the consumables in your torch that can handle the amps you're putting out. If you have a machine set to 80 amps with the consumables only capable of handling 60 amps max, you're going to burn through them. Some machines come with amperage guides which you can use as a starting point. For example, Unimig's ViperCut 30 Plasma Cutter comes with a recommended setting guide in the user manual. In general, the air pressure regulator can be found on the back of the machine above the air filter. The regulator will have a hose that runs in one side and out the other with a twistable valve top. This valve is how you change the air pressure, which you can see on the pressure gauge. Most Unimig machines come preset to a pressure level that will work well regardless of the amperage, and the regulator is inside the machine. A good starting pressure, regardless of the machine, is 75 psi. 
The amps and the air pressure do work together, so if you're cranking your amps as high as they can go, you want to up your air pressure as well. You don't want one overpowering the other, as it will give you a poor quality cut. 2T or 2 touch means you will need to hold the button down while you're cutting. In 4T or 4 touch mode, you will only need to click the button to ignite the arc and it will stay ignited until you click it again to turn it off. This setting works the same way that a welder's 2T or 4T setting works, but there is no foot pedal option. The air test light looks like a gas bottle and this will check that your air is flowing through the torch at the correct pressure. This setting will have an image of a plasma cutter over a dotted line. This setting will allow you to cut over mesh and other perforated metals. The torch arc will automatically cut out on standard settings if it can't find metal to complete the electric circuit. So, switching to this mode will keep your arc steady for a smooth cut. Otherwise, you'll have to keep pulling the trigger to start the arc over and over. You can get two types of cut with your plasma cutter. A clean cut or a severance cut. Clean cut is precisely what it says, a smooth, clean cut on the metal. Severance is a cut all the way through, but it won't be smooth, and if you plan on working on it after, you'll need to clean it up. Every plasma machine will have a maximum clean cut thickness and a maximum severance. These indicate how thick the metal can be if you want a good quality cut, and how thick the metal can be if you just need to get through it. The severance thickness will always be more than the clean cut thickness. The metal thicknesses will vary depending on how many amps you can use. Your machine model will determine your max amps. Aluminium is the softest metal. Steel is harder and stainless steel is the hardest of the three. Despite their hardness, aluminium and stainless steel have a higher viscosity than mild steel. Aluminium and stainless steel's max cutting thickness are usually smaller than steel's max thickness because of their viscosity. The max cut and severance thickness your machine can do should be included in the product information. So make sure you get one that will go through the metal you're planning to cut. Your travel speed will depend on how thick the material is that you're cutting. The sparks should be coming out straight down on the other side of the plate when travelling at the correct speed. If you're cutting too fast, the sparks will spray at a very steep angle in the opposite direction that you're cutting. Some sparks might even fly out of the top. If they're flying out of the top, it means your plasma arc isn't cutting all the way through and the sparks are bouncing off that part that is still joined together. If they are coming out straight down, but you're getting stuck in grooves, you're cutting too slow. And cutting too slow results in the wider curve, which is material loss due to the cutting process, and dross, which is excess metal from the cut that hardens on the bottom of the piece and needs to be cleaned off. Cutting too slow also makes the cut much harsher. It won't be as smooth as it could be. Before you cut, make sure to mark out where you want to cut. Whether it's a straight line or a shape, freehand cutting will always be worse than a guided cut. To do the actual cut is relatively easy. Once your machine and torch are ready to go, place the tip of your torch flush with the metal where you're cutting, pull the trigger and away you go. For extra accuracy on your cuts, add a piece of sheet metal to push your torch up against to keep your lines straight. That is, if you want straight lines. You can also measure from the shield's outer edge to the center of the cutting tip opening and add that width between the line you wish to cut and the sheet metal you're leaning against. This will mean that your cut will be dead on, rather than slightly to the side of where you drew it. You should cut your lines on the waist side of the material. You can get circle cutting attachment kits for some plasma torches to help you make perfect circles. If you are starting in the middle of the plate and piercing straight through, it's a good idea to angle the cutter roughly at 45 degrees so that the metal doesn't jump back in the tip and clog it up. Once you've pulled the trigger and the plasma has pierced all the way through the metal, you can angle the torch back up 90 degrees and begin cutting. If you're just starting from an outer edge, you can just start at 90 degrees. If you're gouging instead of cutting, the process is almost the same. You'll still run your torch along in the line, but rather than holding it straight up and down, keep it roughly a 45 degree angle from the metal, as though you're pushing a MIG torch. This helps to avoid going through the piece because you just want to remove the defect weld. Even if you have the right travel speed, which corresponds with the amps and air pressure, plasma cutting will leave a bit of dross on the bottom. This can be removed with a chipping hammer. It's generally not too thick, so it's easy to clean up. Well, we hope you've learned some valuable skills today, so get out there and get plasma cutting. Always remember to work safe, secure, and follow the guidelines set out by the manufacturer and regulators. 
So don't forget to tag Unimig in your next plasma cutting project, and we'll see you next time.